from Dance Dart Astrology bringing you the lunar eclipse on January the 21st and this falls at zero degrees Leo. So this is going to be a total eclipse and it will mainly be seen in North and South America and also Northeast Europe. So this is a nice Western eclipse for us in the Western Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere rather. Um, so this one's going to have the aspect of sextile to Ceres. So that means that family and inheritance are emphasised, as is personal and national sovereignty. The lunar eclipse star is, is Aludra in the faithful Canis Major and man's best friend. And the sun will be on Altair, which is the star of imperialism, since Altair is found in the constellation Aquila, which is Jupiter's swooping eagle. So this is going to be a lunar eclipse that's kind of close to my heart, really, because it's kind of um, touching all my favourite themes. Plus, it's actually opposite my own sun. So, um, yeah, uh, this is a bit of a personal one. So the lunar eclipse, because it's in Leo Decan 1, carries a theme of ancestral connections. The moon doesn't have any special power in this decan, but it does well in acquiring material wealth. This may be through material inheritance or through an inherited character trait or talent. Whatever the case, family loyalty and values are tested at this time, as is the importance of passing something of value down to one's descendants. One problem at this lunar eclipse will be pressure to identify strongly with one's family clan. The hive mind that exists between family members will literally be buzzing on overtime. Breaking out of any undesirable infantile behaviour patterns will be hard work at this time. A full moon in Leo Decan 1 has almost religious reverence towards the older generations and this ancestral connection brings our spirit guides closer to us. So it's comforting to feel somebody has your back and gives one greater confidence. The negative sides of this eclipse could dredge out all the nasty family skeletons and ignite some bitter family feuds as well. But on the positive side, this could be an amazing time to find and connect with long and reconnect with long lost and missing members of your family clan. Also a good time to do a DNA test as well, if that's what interests you. So the star, as I said, is Aludra, but I'm going to look also at Altair because Altair is such a um, strong star in myth as well. And it's a brighter star than Aludra too and has more mythology behind it. So we'll look at both of them. Um, so the closest star is the Aludra one. This is found in Canis Major, the same constellation that houses Sirius. And Aludra is one of the group of stars known as the Maidenhead or the Virgins. Now these terms are applied to stars Wezen and Adara. But Manila says of Canis Major in general that it will fashion unbridled spirits and impetuous hearts. It will bestow on its sons billows of anger and draw upon them the hatred and fear of the whole populace. Hmm. So not the most restrained of virgins really. Other than the above, Aludra does not really have that much mythology or literature attached to it. So that's why I thought I better look at Altair as well. You know, with a lunar eclipse, the sun being opposite does shine its light on the um, full moon and therefore cast some effect as well. So let's have a look at Altair. And this is Jupiter's Imperial Swooping Eagle. That's why I call this post Imperial Swoop. Now the sun on Altair is public honour, notoriety, favours from superiors, many friends and some envious ones who cause trouble through writings, some ill health and losses, danger of bites from venomous animals. Hmm, snakes I guess, or serpent, serpentines, serpent types. Um, it also means to be a bold and determined individual, to be reckless or a daredevil and have a high regard for independent and decisive action. And the last um, quote was from Bernadette Brady. The first one was from Robson. So Altair is found at the heart of the Aquila the Eagle 
And now Robson says of Aquila in general that the constellation, now this is interesting, has no astrological influence um, by the ancients, but it seems to be associated with the ideas of passion, love and friendship. It's also been, it's also said to give a love of swimming and be connected with certain sex irregularities, casamite paedophilia associations involving young boys and older men. Now, um, on a side note, the, you know, Jupiter, I've seen Jupiter turn up in lots of charts of paedophiles. It's, um, you know, it's, it, he is, an, uh, he is the, um, nymph chaser after all. And he did like his pretty young boys. I mean, Jupiter seemed to have just chased anything with legs. It really didn't matter which sex it was. So, um, yeah, so that's Jupiter's, um, side, um, unrestrained side, I guess. Um, now regarding the positive sides though, Robson says it's said to give great imagination, strong passions, indomitable will, a dominating character, influence over others, clairvoyance, a keen penetrating mind, an ability for chemical research. Robson also says that with Altair on its own, um, it confers a bold, confident, valiant, unyielding, ambitious and liberal nature. Great and sudden but ephemeral wealth. A position of command makes its natives guilty of bloodshed and gives danger from reptiles again. So when I first read that, I wondered if the reptiles mentioned were David Icke's um, reptilian bloodlines. You know, just a thought there. So the first face of Leo, this is what the Picatrix says about him. And this time I've included the artwork that goes with it by Jay Swafford. A man wearing dirty clothes and there rises him an image of a rider looking to the north and his body looks like the body of a bear and the body of a dog. This is the face of strength, generosity and victory. Hmm. Okay, um, so just generally um, the lunar eclipse is a super menstrual wolf howler version of a full moon and it will do a great job of purging and releasing things from your life that no longer serves your higher self. Um, the bright light of the sun throws a spotlight on your subconscious to illuminate any any issues within our primary relationships that have been festering there since, since the previous solar eclipse. But with the lunar eclipse, the earth comes between the sun and the moon. And sometimes we get a blood red moon as the earth's shadow slowly creeps across its crater face. So the lunar eclipse can last up to three months and it can be a somber but cleansing and healing time or a joyous birthing time. It really depends because it's quite sad really it's like it can be it can be like a miscarriage if nothing is formed at this time so it's one or the other the violent energy that desperately needs to be purged shouldn't be dreaded though there are very emotional times and therefore we really need to sit quietly and listen to what comes up for our feelings are our psychic barometer so unashamedly ball your eyes out if you have to and allow the red eyes to come up with this blood red moon. Don't fear the tears as they are sacred salty purification. So let's look at the aspect. So the sun is sextile Ceres and we can also look at the trine to Ceres as well from the moon. So the sun, the sun sextile Ceres makes this solar eclipse want to share and be generous. The common theme seems to be the propagation of talents and spreading their seeds around to as many people in the world as possible. It makes for great social commentators, makes us charitable and want to see the world grow and flourish around us. However, this eclipse energy can also be a hoarder and enjoy making wealth just for the sake of it. Now, Ceres, of course, has the sad tinge, the sad chin, can't say it, has the sad tinge of sorrow, loss and separation as well. But with the sextile, we are consciously steering away from the dark days and trying to use the experience to make the world a better place. So we can be prone to wearing rose tinted glasses at this time as we skip through our utopia, which can be infuriating to some 
but at the same time charming in its innocence. Being seen as a benefactor is important for feelings of self-worth for those who are touched by this full um, moon eclipse. So moon trine Ceres gives luck and the ability to bounce back from tragedy. Fortunes tend to fluctuate from one extreme to another at this time, and, but we can take it in our stride, saved by the ability to see the funny side of life. A sense of humour gets us through the stickiest of situations, but we can have quite, it can have quite a dark edge to the comedy as well. This aspect is an extremely sensuous one with an appreciation for the aesthetic and general good taste. And it can be quite an indulgent one and love luxury as well. However, it is generous too, like the sun, charity is important. Moon Trine Ceres is fascinated by history and can be very nostalgic. Family and ancestry comes up again and it's highlighted. We will like to keep archives to preserve the past for posterity and passing on talents to the younger generation is also important at this time as I said in the beginning and having as is having the inheritance to pass down. As with all Sarah's aspects the need to nurture is marked and we will do this in our most basic material way providing food warmth and shelter to those that we love. So the tarot card that is associated with this decan is the Five of Wands. So Teach Me Tarot says that the Five of Wands tears up the rule books and begins to write its own. Its energy explodes with the wands splitting in several directions at once. It is unclear what is happening and where it will all end. Drama, mayhem and chaos will rule the day. Expect the unexpected, for that is the only thing that can be relied upon. Fire likes to travel and expand, but does not like to be held back and restricted. It is a positive, forward-flowing energy that thrives on momentum and enthusiasm. So you can clearly see the dramatic and boisterous energy of Leo is depicted in this card, and the competitiveness and struggle of Saturn ruling this decan are also evident too. So the summary then, well family and inheritance are the big themes for this lunar eclipse in Leo. Natal, nation, nationalism and the greater family are in the spotlight and you know we have seen there is a rise in populism as it's so quaintly described. The moon rules all things to do with the family and genetic memory that what we call our home. The moon is the common people, whereas the sun could be seen to represent the imperial royal line when it comes to this lunar eclipse. Those bloodlines, symbolised by the sun, cast a light on the common moon, but the earth gets in the way and breaks the circuit. The disconnect serves to break the programme, switching off the media and cell phone reception, etc. In the olden days, religions kept the masses in check and it's interesting how Jesus referred to his followers as his flock. The language of the Bible can be quite illuminating if we read it both esoterically and literally. You know, how people are described as sheeple, you know, who just blindly follow cult leaders. Um, I'm not, by the way, I'm not having a go at Jesus because you can read it in so many different ways. And uh, that, that's another podcast altogether. But um, he is a sun god anyway. Uh, now, the moon on Ludra makes me think of the current yellow vests protests in France, which is now spreading to other countries. And Ludra is the faithful dog, the common man, and dog is God backwards. It makes me wonder why so many Italian swear words involve dogs, gods and pigs. All right, I'm going to give you some Italian swear words now. There's porco cane, which is pig dog, dio cane, which is god dog, and then to cap it all, porco dio, which is pig god. Words are spells. Um, anyway, uh, you know, it's it, it's just one of those play with words and I just thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, anyway, the, the talent scouts of the elite, Altair, is where the sun is, and as I alluded to earlier, Jupiter's eagle will swoop down and pick out nice looking young 
wine server boys for his banquets. Now, the elites always like to be served by scantily clad young things. And I noticed this while watching old episodes of Dallas. I know I do like Dallas. I don't know. That's my that's my guilty pleasure. Um, maybe some people are too young to know that soap opera, but just love it. Just love it. It's like a I suppose it's like a Greek um, tragedy, comedy, whatever rolled into one. Um but yeah, looking back at it, it's it's another time. And it's only the 80s, not that long ago, really. Um, anyway, I'm digressing, sorry. Um, what I wonder, though, is if we will see more Hollywood horror stories concerning child stars and how they're groomed. As that seems to be a really altair type of energy. So I've come to the conclusion now that there are two breeds of elites fighting for control over the planet and uh, wonder if the Altair types are the Apollonian elites. And within those, there are some ruthless, power-hungry, overt narcissists. But on the other side, there are the Dionysian elites. And within those, there are some negative reptilian types who are more like covert narcissists. This doesn't mean that the paedophilia is only going on within the Apollonian sets. Far from it. I just think it's easy to spot because it's blatantly overt with the Apollonian types. With the Dionysians, the abuse goes underground and I think it makes it more easily corrupted because it's cloaked with good intentions. A good example is Jimmy Savile in the UK who preyed on vulnerable children in special needs schools and hospitals. Now, these are the type of children who are less likely to protest against their abuse and in case you don't know about Jimmy Savile, this loathsome creature was actually knighted by the Queen for his so-called charity work. So watch out for those fake do-gooders, um, do-gooding Sarah's types, because all is not what it seems. And I was just it just occurred to me that Neptune is a bit of a theme with the the solar eclipse, and Neptune and Sarah's, both of those together. You put Sarah's and Neptune together, they are sort of uber Dionysian and uber fake do-gooder. Um, obviously, they have their positive sides as well, but I'm just saying watch out for, you know, um, say something like Sarah's Square Neptune would be a very much a kind of covert narcissist energy. So the crystal that I chose for healing was the Perido or Peridot. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, anyway, since it guards against destructive jealousy caused by betrayal in past relationships and personal fears that we are unlovable rather than relating to the present relationship. Perido is naturally protective against evil, gossip behind your back and people who deceive you. It's very effective if you suffer from recurrent nightmares about evil spirits, murders or sexual attacks. Peridot is a gentle and protective stone that will divert negative energy away from you and make you lucky in all your endeavours. And crystal, sorry, healing crystals for you say that these green stones have been recognised since ancient times to be a useful stone to wear for protection against psychic attack or abductions from those eagles. And they're historically reputed to be especially good to use while doing spiritual work. On the emotional level, they have an excellent action to assist you to feel happier and they will help you to let go of feelings of anger or jealousy. If you haven't checked out already, I've done the interpretations for this lunar eclipse and how it affects your sign with the January forecast. So check that out for more information about that. So yes, that brings me to the end. Well, keep safe, keep hold of your peridot Watch out for those swooping eagles and I'll see you next time. All the best. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.